PayPal's um, uh, subsidiary Braintree is integrating with Coinbase to help them accept Bitcoin payments for you know all the merchants that use the Braintree application. This was this news came out like earlier in the week, uh, the day before the Apple event, and made some big waves that day. But then it was kind of buried by all the news later in the week as well. But um, let's let's time travel a bit and talk about the PayPal thing. Like PayPal's subsidiary is now accepting Bitcoin, and people are like kind of uh, saying that this is a huge development, and and PayPal uh, supporting Bitcoin is 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 pretty huge. But we have to like we have to uh, you know taper our expectations a little bit because. PayPal itself isn't integrating Bitcoin. You don't see a Bitcoin option in the new PayPal or the the new PayPal app or anything like that. It's just a small subsidiary that allows you to pay with Bitcoin now through Coinbase to the merchants through that particular platform. And those merchants have to opt into this program to accept Bitcoin. They have to create their own wallet on Coinbase. So um what do you do you think this is uh big news or how will this affect the ecosystem i don't think it's really um obviously the community disagrees with me because there was a huge reaction to it but i don't think it was really big news because like you said it's not paypal it's some like little you know paypal child you know um <laughs> adoptive child they yeah they, yeah they bought it last and, year uh, and it doesn't, it's not anything new. It's just increased merchant adoption, uh, which, yeah, in the past, up until this year, up until 2014, every time a, a big merchant uh, announced that they would be accepting Bitcoin, the price went up because people would invest because um, they saw a growing legitimacy of, in Bitcoin. These mainstream businesses are accepting. But now that's, but now that's expected. Um, you know, it's yeah. just... An it's every an everyday anymore. thing, an everyday thing. Like, um, like I th I think in order for a merchant acceptance to create, you know, positive pressure, like upward pressure on the price, like it used to in the past, it would have to be like Walmart accepts Bitcoin now in all of its stores, uh, or something like that. But you know, until that happens, you have these you, you know smaller merchants. Or these payment platforms that like automatically integrate it within to into their merchants' existing uh, point of sale technology. It's uh, it's not going to make the Bitcoin price go up. It, um, it, you know, in reality, uh, ever since 2014 started, every time you know the more merchants accept Bitcoin, the lower the price has gotten, and and that's because. That, you know, they get this wave of Bitcoin profit and they exchange it for uh, fiat and dump all the Bitcoins on the market. Instantly. Yeah. So merchants, um, increasing merchant acceptance is not this amazing news anymore. It's, um, you know, it's old. It happens every day. It, it's, ex it's expected. Um, yeah. We need, like, things that would be really crazy right now is, uh, would be like, Companies paying 100% salaries in Bitcoin, which is happening with this new Canadian company called, I can't remember what it's called, but it, it, it allows um, companies to sign up for this service and then they can pay their employees in Bitcoin. That would be a huge thing if a lot of companies started doing that. Yeah. Another huge thing would be not merchants accepting Bitcoin, but the suppliers of the merchants accepting Bitcoin, because that would mean the downward pressure on the price created by the merchants would stop because they could pay their they could pay their overhead in bitcoin now but um you know mom and pop coffee shop on the corner of you know your local downtown street it's not going to have that it's not really going to have any influence uh, anymore like it used to so right. i don't get the hype surrounding the news yeah, uh, yeah. Honestly, I I would really, really have to totally agree with just like number one, merchant acceptance can have an have a downward effect on the price because they sell it for fiat instantly. That's what Coinbase and BitPay help them do. And number two, like it, the 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 notion that you know bit, wider merchant acceptance would like increase adoption of Bitcoin. I think that's an absurd argument as well. Because 
like w just because you can you can spend it at a few more places doesn't mean that some someone is gonna out there is gonna be like oh wow so i can i can finally i can buy a coffee now at this one coffee shop a city over <laughs> with bitcoin let me buy some bitcoin now no one no, that's not a thought process of anyone unless they're already a huge bitcoin supporter yeah, right, and they like, like the technology I like at this point, um, at this point in Bitcoin's evolution, it's still much easier to use a credit card. Way easier to use a credit card than it is to use Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and so when when we saw the spikes in, in price, when like uh, when like Overstock, especially, and you know some other big companies, when they announced last year they would be accepting Bitcoin. They, these weren't from everyday people who were like, oh boy, I can buy things with Bitcoin now. They were, it, they were investors. Um, they're like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, they're like, wow, Bitcoin is breaking into the mainstream now with the, you know, these, uh, you know, fairly, fairly large merchants are accepting. Yeah. I better get in on it. Um, before, before the everyday people decide they want Bitcoins. But, but now that's like everyday thing. Um, it's that it doesn't spur investors to buy more Bitcoins anymore because it's expected news. Um, yeah. I it, think there increased was, there's a quote like uh, someone, a, a large um, uh, tech investor or someone, they said like, no, it was it was it was a merchant or maybe um, they said, you know, you'd be stupid to, to not accept Bitcoin now. Like it's it's a no brainer for merchants. It's great for merchants. They, they have lower fees, one percent fees as opposed to three percent fees. And actually, you know, um, I believe BitPay actually took away their fees entirely. So now zero percent fees for accepting Bitcoin. I think that was only for charities. My, it might be. I th there's. I get. I get Coinbase um, and, and BitPay services then, mixed up. Even then, bit, it's yeah. only a one percent fee. Yeah. I think. And so it's a no-brainer for for merchants to accept Bitcoin, and they get it exchanged for fiat instantly. They, I mean, it's probably easier to to do bookkeeping as well. You know, BitPay and Coinbase basically, you know, do those records for you. And there's like there's there's all kinds of record keeping software now that is starting to support Bitcoin. Um, yeah, but then on the customer side, um, you you have to make an exchange account, you know, you have to put all your personal information into their databases, you have to buy Bitcoin. Um, then if, you know, if you're not an idiot, you would transfer it from your exchange wallet to, you know, a real wallet. Um, and then you Learn have to, how actually, to use the wallet. Yeah. Then you actually have to find somewhere that accepts Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, any, like anybody who thinks that at this point, um, it's a, like, cus like, consumers should buy Bitcoin just so that they can, uh, like buy things at stores. You know, that pretty misguided because, uh, from a consumer's point of view, it's much easier to just take out my wallet, pull out this, you know, they have the card. handy, handy little plastic card and swipe it. And, and they get you know, cash back on those cards. So yeah. that's incentive to keep using those. Yeah. At, so what's really, what, what's really going to drive, adoption up which is what we really want not just like you know skyrocketing bitcoin price we want people to want bitcoin so it's gonna um people are gonna have to they're gonna need to access bitcoin um without going all through through all these intermediate steps uh with an exchange of things so you know that would mean like getting paid in bitcoin at, at your job and um you need some like really intuitive user interface, like some kind of you know Bitcoin debit card, uh, yeah. that is, you know, not the Zappo debit card. Maybe maybe what Zappo something said that's actually, actually available in the United States. Maybe yeah, yes, uh, something that would be uh, what Zappo said that their debit card would be, because uh, what. What they marketed was pretty cool. The actual product wasn't so great, um, but things it has to be easy to get Bitcoin and it has to be easy to use Bitcoin. That's what's going to drive up adoption. Yeah. Um, merchants accepting it, not so much because even though there's more places to spend it, it's still kind of there's still a learning curve to buying Bitcoin and using it. So yeah, it's great. It's great for the companies. It's like free marketing basically because they get to be this cutting edge business state-of-the-art technology yeah extra but, income too with low fees yeah we, we still have a long way to go before we get 
um, like big, big adoption, consumer adoption. Yeah, it almost it start it's almost starting to feel like a fool's errand a bit because you it's it's really hard to build up this adoption and you can't force people to do it. You can't even really convince them to do it. Like if someone's opposed to it or they're they're really skeptical of it, uh, people people get offended when when you try and like talk about new monetary systems with them. Uh, those kind of people, it's it's almost like a waste of time trying to convince people like that to adopt Bitcoin because they're already set in their ways. They they like what they have going for them. They probably have credit cards that give them cash back and stuff. And then you know there's this there's the tertiary issue of bitcoin's volatility price can go up or down and like consumers don't want to deal with that they don't want to take the risk of like buying this going through all the learning curve and all that stuff and transferring it and blah 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 and then the the price goes down by like 20 bucks or whatever and you know like let's say they bought a whole bitcoin they just lost 20 bucks right there that's 20 bucks less stuff that they can buy on overstock or whatever so like you know, people who criticize Bitcoin's volatility, it's not it's not a flaw in Bitcoin itself. It's just a it's just a fat it's just a symptom of like a brand new technology that is still gaining adoption. But it it is a point against consumers using Bitcoin. Because why would they? It's risky, it takes a long time to learn, and it's it's just plain not worth it. So this this notion of pushing Bitcoin consumer adoption I think we've kind of kind of hit a point where like we've made as as much progress as we can kind of make at at this point in time um like i i would really really just love more effort uh being put into brand new applications of bitcoin that we've never seen before with any other financial instrument you know like crowdfunding stuff multi-sig stuff open bazaar stuff <laughs> Like that's the really exciting stuff happening in Bitcoin right now. We, we've kind of got the merchant stuff covered. Our 2014 right. has pretty yeah. much covered that. Yeah, I, th I think it's. I think it, I think it's still too early to push widespread uh, consumer adoption. Anyways, uh, just because Bitcoin is far from being, uh, it's far from being perfected at this point. There's still lots of problems with it, but um, you're not. You're of course you're going to convince some people by explaining you know the virtues of bitcoin blah 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 i was one of those people who were who's talked into bitcoin um but, but you were just, you were kind of politically leaning that way already so you were open yeah. to the concept yeah I, I was already open to the concept and then you know it just took a lecture from jeffrey tucker to push me over the edge and um but you're not i really don't think we're gonna see huge amounts of people like rushing into bitcoin until the dollar gets much weaker than it already is mm. and even then bitcoin still has to compete with gold um because gold just has uh so much history behind it, it has such a historical precedence of being um you know the money that is, that is like the number one alternative to to the dollar um that people people are just going to think about gold before they even consider bitcoin so you're you know, talking about like when the inflation starts ramping up and people looking yeah, for yeah, ways when, to store their wealth better. When people when people start abandoning the dollar, um, whenever that may happen, um, it could be a hundred years from now for all we know. You know, it's um, it people are going to. I think people are going to go to gold before they go to Bitcoin, especially especially older people who aren't as um, technologically inclined. To be nice yeah, about like it. My parents. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's not a, a lot of people in the Bitcoin community. They they try to be like, oh, you know, Bitcoin's already won. Look at all this these great things that are happening. But most people still don't even know what it is. And um, a lot of people, if you ask them, would would you rather have Bitcoin or gold? Um, they would say gold, but I'd rather have dollars more than anything. Hmm. You know. But it's got a long way to go. It's, a, a lot of people, you know, we, we kind of, we're, we're in this bubble, like we're surrounded by Bitcoin all the time. So we think it's much bigger than it actually is. It still has a long way to go in the, in the mainstream.